Welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll see how we can customize the price scale. I've already told you that in lightweight charts, the Y axis is called the price scale. To customize this, once again, we have to go to their documentation. And on getting started, we have price scale. So if we take a look at here, we can see that we can actually have the price scale on either the right side or the left side. And if we have two series in one chart, then we can have it on both sides. Okay. So if we have a if if we have two series, then for the first series we can have it on the right side, and then for the second series we can have it on the left side, and vice versa. We can actually swap the sides depending on our preference. Okay. And we can also we cannot really remove the price scale, but we can actually make it, um, we can actually hide it by making the visible property false. Okay. So let's get back to our code and, uh, okay. If we go to tutorials, we will see that we also have more options to customize the price scale. So under tutorials, we have to go to price scale. And if we take a look at here, so on the main series, on the on the series, we have access to a method called, called price scale. And on the price scale, we have access to a method called apply options. We are, we are already customizing our price scale to some extent, I believe. So if I go to my code, actually, uh, before, doing any kind of coding, I'd like to remove my old set of data, uh, which which was uh, using time strings, but now we don't really require this because since we're using our new data set with timestamp, so I'm just going to delete all of this. I don't really require that anymore. So it's a big array, so let's delete this. And yeah, I already have my new data. It's It's a big array again. And I'm just going to hide it. Okay. Yeah, so we already we are already using the price scale and apply options method. Okay. So all of the new properties are going to be inside this apply options. Currently, our price scale is on the right side. If we take a look at our chart, we'll see that it is on the right side. So we can actually change that by saying that we want it on the left side. If we refresh, it's not really working. Why is that? Price scale dot left. So do we have to do anything else? going on in here if we so it's not working why is that let's go to the chart again There's nothing actually that says anything regarding this. So I've done a small research and I found that in order to get the price scale on the left side, first we need to hide the right one and then we have to make the left one visible. So let's get back to our code and make the right one the visible property. We can, let's set the value to false and then add a new price scale and it's going to be on the left side so set its visibility to true so it should be working yes so it is working all right let's get back to the docs 
again and uh, so let's see explore the things that we can do um, so we can actually make the price we can fix the price to two decimal point so what does this mean if we get back to our series we can see that after the decimal we have two zeros okay so i don't really require this two zeros because it's just a it's just a it's just a unnecessarily taking space i don't really require this so back in our code we have to go inside localization and inside localization just below the time formatter we have we have another function called price formatter and uh, it takes an argument it takes a parameter called price and we can just uh, make the price dot we can call the two fixed method and we can make it zero so it's center if this syntax is confusing we're just uh, using a shorthand of the arrow function so it's just saying that uh, let's just do it the other way we're just saying that okay return this thing so that that was just a shorthand of the es6 version okay so we got rid of the extra zeros all right let's get back to the documentation once again and uh, see uh, we can actually get our currency with our price okay so in order to do that what we have to do is that we have to utilize the intl dot number format in the last video we've seen that we have uh, in the last video we have utilized the intl dot date format so there is another method called number format so let's utilize this um, right uh, let's delete this and inside i'm going to say const my price is equals to new instance of intl dot number format and uh, this takes two argument one is the locale and other is the options so my locale is enbd since i'm in bangladesh but in your case you can just say en in so and the options are style it's going to be currency and uh, the currency is going to be bdt so in your case you can just say inr since your currency can be indian rupees but in my case i'm just going to say bdt okay and uh, then after this number format we have another method it's called format and inside this format i'm just going to pass the thing that i want to format in this way okay so i want my price to be formatted with the currency bdt so i need to pass the price here and we're going to return this new price return my price now if we take a look at our code we can see that our currency is bdt and uh, we have the price we're still getting that two extra decimal values so let's get rid of that minimum fraction digits okay so let's make it zero and if we take a look at the chart again yeah the extra zeros are gone i don't really like the way it is because uh, i think bdt doesn't have the symbol taka symbol so let's see how the indian rupee looks so we're just going to get rid of the local enbd we are going to change it to in and uh, we shall say that our currency is indian rupees yeah that looks beautiful next i want to show you how we can invert our price scale 
so currently we have the bigger values on the top and the smaller values on the bottom so in order to revert this in our chart.pricescale.apply options and this left one is the visible one currently so inside it i will say invert scale i'll make this true so now we have the smaller values on the top and the bigger values on the bottom okay the last thing that i'd like to show you is that you see how we can drag our chart to the left and right but we cannot really do the same for the top and bottom so if we want to unlock that functionality so we can drag the chart on top and bottom as well what we have to do is that we have to say auto scale is equal to false now we can drag our chart to top and bottom as well okay but i don't really like this functionality because if we comment this out and see if i zoom in or zoom out see how our price scale actually adapts to our data see if i zoom in it adapts to my data but if i make this false if i unlock the top and bottom dragging functionality see even if i zoom in or zoom out this data doesn't really adapt it's just fixed the way it is okay so i don't really like this that's why i'm just going to keep this commented out but i still showed it to you so if your use case requires you to have that requires you to unlock the top and bottom dragging then yeah you can do it but i don't really like this so that was all about customizing our price skill thank you